So this video is going to discuss uh, conjugated dienes and their reactivity. Um, let's jump in here. We talked about a, a little bit about conjugation, saying as a rudimentary definition that uh, conjugation is just a pattern of alternating double and single bonds. And you can see that here. This is double bond, single bond, double bond. The same doesn't have to be a double bond. It can also be a triple bond. Uh, these are just some examples of conjugated systems. This is capsanthin, which is found in paprika. As you can see, the backbone is conjugated, double, single, double, single, double, so on and so forth. And then uh, lycopene, which is found in tomatoes, also has a conjugated backbone. Uh, these are the examples of systems that are not conjugated. As you can see, this is a double bond, and the next double bond closest to it is separated from it by two single bonds. So double, single, single, double. All right, so let's move on. What's special about conjugation is the fact that uh, the carbon here and here, those two carbons are closer together, and all of the p orbitals in this system are able to overlap. This sigma bond here is about 148 picometers. This sigma bond between these two carbons, which are both sp3 hybridized, is about uh, 153 picometers, and on the, uh, roughly. Uh, a system that's conjugated is going to be anywhere from between 3.5 to 4.2 kilocalories per mole more stable than the corresponding non-conjugated system. So let's think about p orbitals and let's think about uh, double bonds and let's look at a system here. This is just a uh, ethene which is a simple pi system. All right? It has a uh, double bond in it so the pi bond which is made up of two p orbitals uh, will give rise to two molecular orbitals. These are the molecular orbitals here for ethene where you have a, a bonding orbital and then an antibonding orbital. Uh, and then when we think about these molecular orbitals we think about them in terms of uh, a standing wave all right, or a wave in a confined space. Okay, So when we think about the orbitals we can think about them as waves and uh, here, the bonding orbital, which is at the lowest energy level of the ground state, we say that that's the first harmonic. The wave never passes through zero. Here, we say that this is its second harmonic. Notice there's now a node here where the wave passes through zero. All right. Thus, that's how we um, alternate shading here, right? Because since the wave passes through zero here, the sign of the lobes changes because these lobes are simply equations. So here's a four. Here's a conjugated pi system. It's got four pi electrons because it has two double bonds. Each double bond is made up of two electrons. So if you want to know the how to calculate the number of pi electrons, just find the number of double bonds and multiply by two. All right. So that's four pi electrons. So this thing has four p orbitals on it. Each carbon has a p orbital on it, and because of that those four p orbitals can act together because remember these two carbons are closer together so every one of these p orbitals uh, is now in harmony right so they can all overlap so because of that you got four p orbitals you also get four molecular orbitals and let's look at the shading this is the first harmonic where there's no nodes second harmonic where there's one node third harmonic where there's two nodes and then the fourth harmonic where there's three nodes let's look at the wave patterns all right, so first, second, third, and fourth. Notice my nodes are symmetrical. I have to uh, put my nodes in in a symmetrical fashion. All right, so because this system is conjugated, all four of these p orbitals are considered together, uh, rather than the two pi bonds being considered separately, as would be the case if I had a non-conjugated system. All right. So let's compare one three butadiene, which is conjugated, and then one four pentadiene, which is non-conjugated. Right. And again, it's the interaction between the uh, carbon two and carbon three that pulls the two pi bonds closer together and causes them all to overlap. All right. So let's go back to this slide. You can see all four p orbitals overlap. Four p orbitals gives me four molecular orbitals, which are here, and each one of those molecular orbitals has to have four p orbitals in it. 